properties of quadratic functions in standard form. Our objective is to define, identify, and graph quadratic functions, as well as identify and use maximums and minimums of quadratic functions to solve problems. Why learn this? Quadratic functions can be used to find the maximum power generated by the engine of a speedboat. Let's start by looking at the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line through the vertex of the function's graph. So it's a vertical line that essentially cuts the parabola in half. So whatever's on the left will be the same as whatever's on the right. And the coordinate will be h, k. So kind of like x, y, but with h and k. So that way it's very specific to the vertex. So the quadratic function, if you have f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, has the axis of symmetry of x equals h. So if your quadratic function is written in this form, h is going to be your axis of symmetry. Let's practice. So we're going to identify the axis of symmetry for the graph of f of x equals 2 times the quantity x plus 2 squared minus 3. Well, we want to make sure it's in the proper form. And if you recall, we needed f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Well, we're very close, but we don't have a minus h. We have a plus h. So to make it a minus, we can rewrite this as x minus negative 2. And the rest of it can kind of come along for the ride for right now. But since we're dealing with the axis of symmetry, the only thing we're really worried about is our h value. And in this case, h equals negative 2. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. It's that vertical line at negative 2 that makes up the axis of symmetry. Let's look at the standard form. So it's going to be f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now for this to work and be in standard form, a cannot be equal to 0. Because if a equals 0, that means x squared doesn't exist, which means you no longer have a quadratic. So let's look at the properties of a parabola. So we're going to look at our function here in standard form. So f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers. So we're not dealing with unreal numbers at this point. And like I said before, a cannot be 0 for this to work. So these are going to be the properties. The parabola is going to open up if a is bigger than 0. So if it's a positive in front here, so if it's a positive a, it's going to open up. If it's a negative a, it's going to open down. You can think of it like a smiley face. So if it's positive, it's happy. And if it's negative, it's unhappy. Okay? The axis of symmetry is the vertical line where x equals negative b or the opposite of b divided by 2a. It's a variation of what we were looking at for our axis of symmetry because this is essentially our h value. The vertex is the point where you have your x value, so your vertex part or your axis of symmetry, that's your x value because that's going to give you the x of this point right here. And if you want to know what the y is, well that's your input, y is your output. So whatever you get for your x, substitute it back in, and there's your y. So then you would have yourself a, an xy coordinate. The y-intercept is the c. So whatever the c value is, that's your y-intercept. Let's practice. 
So consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 6. We want to determine whether the graph opens upward or downward. Well, it's a positive, so we know it's going to open upward. Remember, it's happy. It's positive, so it opens up. Sometimes it's helpful to even draw that in. Now we need to find the axis of symmetry. And that formula that's going to come up quite often is the opposite of b divided by 2a, which translates to 4 divided by 2 times 1, because you can always have a coefficient of 1. And 4 divided by 2 times 1 is 2. So your axis of symmetry is 2. Now to find the vertex. We're simply going to take our x value and plug it back in. Because it's like almost making a table where you had your x values and then you had this formula here. And well, x is our input value. So we have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6. So 2 squared is 4 minus 8 plus 6. So we have negative 4 plus 6 equaling 2. So therefore the vertex is at 2, 2. There is your coordinate. And now we want to graph the y-intercept. Or find the y-intercept, sorry. We're going to graph a function down here. So we want to find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is merely 6. So 6 is your y-intercept. Alright, so now we need to graph it. So graph your vertex, graph your y-intercept, and since we have a line of symmetry, whatever happened to be on the left-hand side is going to have to be evenly on the right. So it automatically gives you your third point, which will formulate your parabola. Take a moment pause the video and try this one on your own. When you return, the answer will be revealed. So we have a negative a, so it opens downward. The axis of symmetry, using the opposite of b divided by 2a, gives you negative 3 halves. Your vertex, when you plug that back in, gives you 6 for your y, so your vertex will be negative 3 halves 6. Your y-intercept is your c-value, so minus 3. So now we graph. Graph your vertex, graph your y-intercept, and mirror image that. Now let's look at minimum and maximum values. So if the parabola opens up, it's going to have a minimum value. But if the parabola opens down, it's going to have a maximum value. In either case, your domain is all real numbers. It's going to keep going infinitely in both directions. Your r is what's going to change, or your range. So you have a minimum value, so that means all your y values are going to have to be larger than that minimum value of whatever k happens to be. In reverse, if you have a maximum, y is going to have to be smaller than any value that is at k. So let's practice. Find the minimum or maximum value of f of x equals 2x squared minus 2x plus 5. Well, to start with, we kind of need the vertex. Because if we recall back, the vertex is the point you're using. Because it's the most minimum or the furthest maximum you've got. There's nothing else. It's minimum and maximum. Okay, so we need the opposite of b divided by 2a. So we have 2 divided by 2 times 2, which leaves you with 1 half. So now we can plug that in because that's our x value. So we have 2 times 1 half squared minus 2 times 1 half plus 5. And when we equate that out, we end up with 4 and a half, 
You could also state it as 4.5, and you could also state this one as 0.5. So our vertex is at 0.5, 4.5. And since it opens up because it's positive, we know that we're going to have a minimum value. So the minimum value is 4.5. So our min, I'm going to go with the whole word here, minimum value is 4.5. But now it wants the domain and range. So your domain is all your x values, and that was all real numbers. And your range was your y values. Well, if it has a minimum, that means all your y values are going to have to be larger. So for all y's, such that y is greater than or equal to 4.5. All right, let's try a real world application. The power P and horsepower HP generated by a high performance speedboat engine operating at R revolutions per minute RPMs can be modeled by this crazy function here. So what is the maximum power of this engine to the nearest horsepower? And how many revolutions per minute must the engine be operating to achieve this power? Well, let's start with the fact that we need to find our R, which would be going with the opposite of B, divided by 2A equals, so we have negative, 0.18 divided by 2 times negative 0 0.00001 Extend our fraction here. And this is about 6,122. So we're going to substitute this back in. So step one complete. So now sub substituting that back in. We end up with negative 0 0.00001475 times 6,122 squared plus 0 0.18 times 6,122 minus 251. So just because the numbers start to become a lot larger, the process is still the same, which gives you about 300. So the maximum power is about 300, so that's your max power, and it needs to be done at 6,122 RPMs. And that ends our lesson on properties of quadratic functions in standard form.